Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia from Alicia Be Creative, and in today's tutorial, we're gonna do things just a little bit different than you've seen on my channel so far. Instead of designing a tumbler, we're actually going to design a pair of shoes. So think summer neons meets leopard print, and of course, you know I had to throw in just a little bit of glitter to add some extra pizzazz. So of course, everything I use in today's tutorial will be listed and linked in the description down below. So feel free to check that out. And then if you have any questions about anything I did in today's tutorial, please feel free to leave those in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer those. Also, don't forget to check that description box because in that description box has my brand new Facebook group, LBC Community. And in that group, you can get help with any of the tutorials that I've done so far, as well as join us for live tutorials, giveaways, and it's just a lot of fun over there. So please feel free to join us. I'd love to see you there. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel as well as click that notification bell so that you know when I post my videos. I do post videos every Saturday and I wouldn't want you to miss out. All right, I feel like that's more than enough for us. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, everybody, so I am starting with a pair of just white canvas shoes that I picked up from Five Below. It's just like a cheapy kind of dollar store type store, but you can actually get some super cool stuff from there. So I'm gonna start by just taking out the shoestrings to make sure I don't get any paint on those. So I'm gonna start too by saying that this is actually inspired by Crafting by Myra. So she is someone who's in the Tumblr community. She makes some amazing tumblers. And I actually stumbled across her live with Stardust Creations at Maisha Creations um, and Myra makes it and they were creating these shoes. So they created these shoes strictly with just the acrylic paints, but you know, I gotta be a little extra. So we're gonna add just a little bit of glitter to give these shoes just a little bit of extra sparkle. I mean, sparkles, there's nothing wrong with a little extra sparkle, right? So I'm also going to very much apologize right now, guys, because you're going to get a lot of shots of the top of my head. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, even when I am wearing my glasses, it's like I can't see. For some reason, I feel like I need to be closer, and sometimes I forget that I'm recording, so I have to move my head out of the way. So I apologize for that. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just taping off the bottom portion of the shoe because I don't want to get any paint on that shoe or on that part of the shoe. So I'm just going to tape off the rest of the shoe with just some blue painters tape, um, doing it in kind of small sections because obviously, you know, a rectangle doesn't really go along a curve very well. Um, so I'm going to tape this off and then I will move into the next part, which is going to be us getting ready to paint these shoes. So now we're gonna go ahead and paint these shoes. Most of the paints that I have here are Liquitex paints. I just picked them up from Michaels and then I have one neon blue Craft Smart paint that I'm gonna be using. So I am just grabbing some paint brushes. The one thing that I do wish that I had is larger paint brushes. So when I made these shoes or created these shoes, my paintbrush order hadn't come in and all my other paintbrushes were like so gross and so grubby. So I couldn't really use them. And so I only had like really small, fine paintbrushes to use. So I had to just kind of make do. Anyway, so I'm just going to start with the color pink. I'm starting with that for the toe. And then I'm just going to move through the different colors from uh, pink all the way to purple being my last color. So also super awesome shout out to Maestra Creations for the genius idea of using like cardstock or like um, scrapbook paper that I always have lying around like to be my workspace. Like why did I never ever think of that? Like my goodness, work smarter, not harder, right girl? All right, so I'm moving into the orange and orange did take a little bit more space than I wanted to. So you could do your colors obviously in any order. You could even use different colors. You don't have to do the neon colors. Um, and you could make whatever sections bigger that you want. So when you are going to mix though the two colors, so where the two colors meet is I went through with the color that was before it first and then went back over it with my paintbrush of the color I was currently working on. So with that orange section, I marked a little bit of pink kind of on the orange and then went back over that section with the orange to kind of create a little bit of a blend. I feel like if I could have spent more time on that, I probably would have blended a little bit better, but I think all in all, the final project did come together quite well. This again is gonna be a just a personal pair of shoes for me, so I'm not really too concerned or worried about a perfect paint job. I could have gone over these sections for sure with a second coat, but I was just feeling a little like, ah, 
not, it's still bright. You can still see, like, no one's really going to get that up close and personal with my sneakers anyway. So I wasn't, I didn't really mind too much if I had a couple white spots that weren't really visible to the naked eye, if you will. So the other thing that I will say is that you're going to want to make sure that you're paying super close attention to where the shoelace strings go in. So be careful that that you're painting as close to that, what do they call it, like a little eyelet or out, it has like a fancy word, that little circle that you put the shoe strings through. I know y'all know what I'm talking about, but just be careful with that because I did have in a couple sections when I was painting this area, I got some paint stuck in there. And although it wasn't a huge or big deal, um, obviously you just wanna make sure you clean that out before it completely dries, just cause it's not a pain to have to scrape it out when it's completely dry. So we've moved on now to the green and now we are going to be moving in to the blue and purple sections. So my large section of orange kind of did cram, if you will, my blue and purple on because that section was so big, it kind of made me had to do smaller sections. So if I was to go back and recreate these sneakers for someone or another pair for myself, I probably would have made the orange section a little bit smaller, but I do love orange and pink and yellow together. So I do love the front half of the shoe. It really is super cute and super bright and vibrant. So I'm going to finish up by going through and doing both the blue sections and the purple sections. So I'll play a little bit of music and then we are going to hop in to how we do the leopard spots. Okay, so now it's time to add the spots for the leopard print. So the way that you're going to add the spots is you're going to add spots to the colored section based on the color before it. Okay, so let me explain. So for my pink section, I put purple spots because if I had continued my pattern after the purple, the next color would have been pink. Then on the purple section, I'm doing blue because there's blue right before the purple. For the blue section, I'm doing green and so on and so forth all the way up to the front of the shoe. So the way that I'm putting leopard print the spots on here, kind of like the, the color in between the black, is I'm just randomly dabbing in different sections. With leopard print, you don't really have to worry about it being perfect and you don't want it to look perfect because when it does look perfect, that's when it doesn't look like leopard print. So just remember, leopard print is supposed to be super fun. I love leopard print. So being able to put this on a pair of shoes was like, just made my day. Okay, so I've let my shoes dry for, I actually let them dry for two full days um, just because I was working on other projects and didn't have the opportunity to get back to this one. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be applying the black outline around the colored spots all over the cup. So I just put some Mod Podge into a little medicine cup and then I'm actually using the black 3.0. It's from Culture Hustle. I actually purchased it um, because of a Jessica Flynn video. Um, and so I couldn't find my regular black acrylic paint. So I just used that. I will link that in the description below. I haven't yet used this on a tumbler yet. Uh, I hope to be able to do that soon, but it is supposed to be like the blackest paint in the world. So I'm just going to be apply applying that black Mod Podge black paint uh, mixture around the leopard spots. So in how I'm creating the leopard print is, you'll see in some sections, I'm going to be doing like C shapes around the colored spots. And then in other sections, I create more of a parenthesis look around the spot. So the choice is yours, certainly for sure. Don't feel like you need to make each spot perfect again leopard print is not perfect um, but if you need to you could also print up or have on your phone you know a picture of leopard print and kind of use that for your um, imaging to be able to draw your leopard print spots so I'm also using a new glitter today. So this is Death by Glitter from Myasha Creations. 
I absolutely love her glitters. Guys, I know I say this about all the glitters, but like I just found her shop and like purchased glitter from her from the first time. I've been following her for a while, but haven't ever purchased. And so like I just purchased a bunch of glitter from her and like this stuff is freaking gorgeous. So this is a black holographic glitter. So I was like, this is absolutely perfect to be able to add to these leopard print shoes. I absolutely love this. So again, this is Death by Glitter um, and that is by Maisha Creations. I will link her website website down in the description below for anybody who wants to check out her website um she does have some amazing colored glitters um i already have another order on the way because we all know i have a glitter addiction i know it's a real problem guys send help okay so what i'm doing is i'm just going to continue to create the black outline around the different colored spots i'm just going to go kind of around the shoe starting at one point and going all the way around so take your time with this this did take me a little bit longer um if you will for the length of the process like this is probably the longest part um and i think it's just because i wanted to make sure that there was enough leopard print spots on the shoe and that it didn't look like it had huge bare spots and things like that you'll see that in some sections i added additional like black spots if you will black leopard print spots without any of the center color um because i felt like there was some spots on the shoe that had a little bit of bare areas that needed a little bit more color in order to bring the whole shoe collectively together so yeah, so I'm only going to show you this one shoe because again, it is the exact same thing on the other shoe. Um, but again, guys, if you have questions about how I create my leopard print, there are some fantastic tutorials out there. I know that Jessica Flynn did a really good one, um, a live, I think, on her YouTube a while back that shows leopard print. There's also just a lot of different um, ways that you can do leopard print. So I'm always more than happy to answer any of your questions. As always, leave those in the comment section or find me on any of my social medias and I would be more than happy to help you out. Okay, so... Both shoes are completely finished with the glittering. I did go in and spray this with some clear spray, the matte from Rust-Oleum, so matte clear gloss, matte clear spray, not gloss, the matte. Um, but now we are going to move in to finishing up these shoes. So I did let these shoes dry for 12 hours before I did do the spray sealing. I don't even know that you need to add the spray sealing, but I wanted to make sure that my glitter wasn't gonna move when I applied the sealer. Um, so I did spray them just to be safe. So what we're using is we're using Outdoor Mod Podge. This has the green label on it. You can purchase it from your local craft store. And we are just going to apply this Mod Podge directly to the shoe anywhere that there's paint and glitter. So I'm doing very, very thin coats with just a flat paintbrush that I have. And I'm just going over section by section and really paying attention and making sure that I am getting Mod Podge on each section of the shoe. I wanna make sure that these are completely sealed so that when I wear, wear them outside, I don't have to worry about any of the different climate and weathers affecting the wear and tear of my shoe. So I'm just gonna go around the shoe, just paying very close attention, attention to each section, making sure I'm covering each area fully um, with the Mod Podge, the Outdoor Safe Mod Podge. So yeah, just kind of going all the way around and paying attention to close detail and then moving into that middle section, the tongue, if you will, of the shoe to just make sure I'm also covering that area. I spent a little bit more time on that middle section just to make sure I was afraid that the Mod Podge was gonna make it stick to the sides of the shoe. So I really just tried to be careful and stretch out the shoe as much as I could so that I didn't run in into any issues with sticking. Okay, so I have applied three thin coats of that outdoor Mod Podge. And so now during the final coat, while the Mod Podge is still wet, I'm just going to remove that blue painter's tape off the bottom section of the shoe. So I'm going to let both shoes dry for probably about 12 to 24 hours. You don't have to, but I just wanted to to make sure I didn't mess anything up in cleaning up the shoes. Okay, so finally, we are going to get these shoes all cleaned up and ready to be worn. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of 91% alcohol into a medicine cup and just using some Q-tips, I'm going to just clean up that bottom area. So I did get in some spots where the blue painter's tape didn't touch, um, didn't touch fully, I should say. I am just cleaning up those areas where some of the paint got onto the bottom. So I'm starting, I started with 91% alcohol and when I felt like that wasn't strong enough for 
the section I did move into using a little bit of pure acetone again both of these things you can pick up from Walmart um, that's typically where I purchase my 91% alcohol and my acetone so I'm just using q-tips right now you are gonna see me I actually end up grabbing a coffee filter too because as you're using the acetone it does smear a little bit so you just have to be careful when you are using that and then if you need to go back in with something a little bit stronger like a paper towel or coffee coffee filter or whatever you typically use to clean up any of the smudges that you may get on your the bottom part of your shoes so Again, I knew this wasn't going to be absolutely perfect, which was fine because again, it's a pair of shoes for me. I'm not selling these. I'm not I'm not gifting them. I'm not really worried about too much about what they look like. Just something super cool to be able to add to my leopard print collection um, and to be able to wear this summer. So once I was finished cleaning these up, I did redo the laces and then of course went right outside to take some gorgeous pictures of these leopard print shoes. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was so much fun to make and I can't wait to wear these shoes all summer long. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up and follow me on social media and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.